Well, sometimes we aren't quite prepared for something. I learned that yesterday. After spending so much time getting overseeing that the altar is prepared and the sacristy is taken up and going over the ceremonies, I managed somehow to overlook one important part of the whole ceremony, the bishop's role in it. And then I had to scramble and make phone calls to the sacristan and then the, to the choir and to the servers and priests and, and all of the rest. And well, it all worked out just fine. But as I was going through all of that, I thought to myself, well, who's the bishop here anyway? He should really get on top of things. But in any case, it all worked out just fine. But we do always want to be prepared, whether it's some test that we are going to take or whether it's for a day of teaching, whether it's a trip you're taking somewhere. But above all, we want to be prepared for the coming of Christ at Judgment Day and into our hearts on Christmas Day. And so it is that Holy Mother Church has given us these next four weeks of Advent, which symbolize the 4,000-year preparation for Christ's coming into this world to prepare our souls for the beautiful feast of our Lord's Nativity. Advent, then, is a time of preparation. Preparation which is often not viewed properly. It's a time of spiritual preparation before all else. Sometimes, though, well, face it, just about every time, we make resolutions for a better Advent this year to prepare our hearts, but then we get a little bit busy with the gift wrapping and the shopping and the lights and everything else, and we find ourselves once more unprepared. But not this year. You know, oftentimes it's the, that whole not knowing what sacrifice to make for Advent that keeps us from completing, or rather starting, our preparation for Christmas. We don't know what to do because we haven't given it much thought. And we haven't given it much thought because there is so much noise in our lives. So how about this for your Advent resolution? The practice of silence this year. Not that cold sort of silence that lets everyone know that you're in a bad mood and that they'd better watch out. Not that melancholy silence that is just giving in to his own sadness and then only tends to isolate itself and lead to even more sadness. We don't want that either. But we want the silence that is fruitful conducive to prayer and to thinking of eternity. Did you ever think of this, that the paradise in which Adam and Eve were created was not filled with noise? There were sounds, all right, but they were sounds which were meant to delight the ear without ever distracting from God. They were well-ordered sounds, perfect sounds. Just as in that place, everything was perfectly well-ordered by God. Then that serpent, the devil, came into the garden and he brought along with him chaos and discord. And from that point on, the chaos of noise entered the world noise in the proper sense of the term, for noise is actually defined as a sound that is loud or unpleasant or that causes disturbance. That's a noise. But on the other hand, peace is the tranquility of order. And where there is no order, 
there is chaos, noise and distraction of, of every kind. And if you've noticed, you never do quite feel at ease when you're in a messy home. That's because there is no order. It is all in chaos. But let's say we found ourselves in a clean house and everyone there is perfectly quiet. There is still a certain noise, the noise that no one but you can detect, the noise of your intellect, your imagination buzzing about and thinking of all sorts of unhelpful and unhealthful things. And usually these are the things that distract us from God. Our minds are, ever since the fall of Adam, no longer tranquilly ordered to Almighty God. We've always got to fight to restore order. And so true peace of mind, true peace, supernatural peace of mind is hard to come by. But this is why we find silence so difficult, because we're faced with what we might find out about ourselves. We will be faced with all of our anxieties, our deep longings, our painful questions, the thought of the soul, and the thought of heaven and hell. But if you want peace of mind, then you must have the practice of silence. And if you want to be prepared spiritually for our Lord's nativity, then silence will be your most helpful tool. Father Maximilian Kolbe, he was, he's not a canonized saint, he was only canonized by Vatican II, but nonetheless he is a very holy man. He said, silence is necessary and even absolutely necessary. If silence is lacking, he says, then grace is lacking. And that is the whole reason why so many saints left the world and fled to the desert to seek silence, not as an end in itself, as if they were some crotchety, grumpy men who just wanted to get away from everyone and never have another conversation again. No, they did it so they could serve God more perfectly. But in silence, this is what we have to remember. God speaks to the heart. God is not in the earthquake, sacred scripture says. He speaks with a small voice. And on the contrary, St. Bernard says that silence forces the soul to think of, of God and of eternal goods. So yes, when we have silence, we have to come face to face with our conscience. But that voice of conscience, remember, that is always chiding you to give up some sinful habit, to give up mortal sin or some sinful living situation, is nothing more than a sweet inspiration from God to give up sin and to turn back to him with all your heart, for he is the Prince of Peace. So silence is actually the first step to holiness. For in silence we hear the voice of God. Silence helps us to preserve the graces that God sends us. And silence, it sets the stage for a true conversation with God. Now what are some practical ways of observing silence during this Advent season? After all, a husband can't just go home and decide he wants to be a monk and not speak to his wife for four weeks. And the wife can't do it either, though it might be tempting. But you live in the world. You come into contact with many a person. So how do you observe silence? Well, first, to refrain from any useless talking. Don't talk just to talk. Social media, that especially encourages wasted speech. Have you ever looked on Facebook or Twitter and 
see what people post about. They talk about their sniffles or they've got a hangnail that's bothering them or complaining about something else. Or you might, from time to time, you'll see some sort of cryptic message which just screams for attention and nothing more. All of it is wasted chatter. The second way is to refrain from complaining. We've got, humanly speaking, many things to complain about. Arthritis and sickness and bad weather and uh, all the work that we've got to do. But refrain from it, nonetheless. Thirdly, don't offer your opinion on matters that don't concern you. That will be a hard one for many a person. Fourthly, resist the urge And this one, this urge is almost imperceptible. You don't notice it until someone points it out to you. Resist that urge to fill up every spare moment with noise. When you get in the car, don't just turn on the radio. When you're at home, you don't need the TV on as background noise. And when you're going through the checkout line at Kroger's, don't start mindlessly checking your phone. All that is needless chatter. You need silence. Instead, say a prayer. Or if you're at home, read a spiritual book. But give some time to God each day during Advent. Take the time to talk to Him and to face one's conscience because one day you will have to answer and make an account of your conscience as today's gospel reminds us. But I finish with this one thought. If it was in the calm quiet of the midnight hour that the infant Savior was born into this world, so also it is in silence that this same God will speak to us And it is in moments of prayerful silence that he disposes our hearts to be ready to welcome him on Christmas. So it is in silence that we prepare for the coming of our great King. Shh, quiet, let God into the conversation. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.